July 19th Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible Ezra chapter 7 and 8 from the Old Testament Now after these things had happened, during the reign of King Artaxerxes of Persia, Ezra came up from Babylon. Ezra was the son of Sariah, who was the son of Azariah, who was the son of Hilkiah, who was the son of Shalom, who was the son of Zadok, who was the son of Ahitub, who was the son of Amariah, who was the son of Azariah, who was the son of Miraoth, who was the son of Zeriah, who was the son of Azai, who was the son of Bakai, who was the son of Abishua, who was the son of Phineas, who was the son of Eleazar, who was the son of Aaron, the chief priest. This Ezra is the one who came up from Babylon. He was a scribe who was skilled in the law of Moses, which the Lord God of Israel had given. The king supplied him with everything he requested, for the hand of the Lord his God was on him. In the seventh year of King Artaxerxes, Ezra brought up to Jerusalem some of the Israelites and some of the priests, the Levites, the attendants, the gatekeepers, and the temple servants. He entered Jerusalem in the fifth month of the seventh year of the king. On the first day of the first month, he had determined to make the ascent from Babylon. And on the first day of the fifth month, he arrived at Jerusalem, for the good hand of his God was on him. Now Ezra had dedicated himself to the study of the law of the Lord, to its observance, and to teaching its statutes and judgments in Israel. What follows is a copy of the letter that King Artaxerxes gave to Ezra, the priestly scribe. Ezra was a scribe in matters pertaining to the commandments of the Lord and his statutes over Israel. Artaxerxes, King of Kings, to Ezra the priest, a scribe of the perfect law of the God of heaven. I have now issued a decree that anyone in my kingdom from the people of Israel even the priests and Levites, who wishes to do so, may go up with you to Jerusalem. You are authorized by the king and his seven advisers to inquire concerning Judah and Jerusalem, according to the law of your God, which is in your possession, and to bring silver and gold, which the king and his advisers have freely contributed to the God of Israel, who resides in Jerusalem along with all the silver and gold that you may collect throughout all the province of Babylon, and the contributions of the people and the priests for the temple of their God, which is in Jerusalem. With this money you should be sure to purchase bulls, rams, and lambs, along with the appropriate meal offerings and libations. You should bring them to the altar of the temple of your God, which is in Jerusalem. You may do whatever seems appropriate to you and your colleagues with the rest of the silver and the gold, in keeping with the will of your God. Deliver to the God of Jerusalem the vessels that are given to you for the service of the temple of your God, the rest of the needs for the temple of your God that you may have to supply. You may do so from the royal treasury. I, King Artaxerxes, hereby issue orders to all the treasuries of Trans-Euphrates, that you may precisely execute all that Ezra, the priestly scribe of the law of the God of heaven, may request of you, up to 100 talents of silver, 100 cores of wheat, 100 baths of wine, 100 baths of olive oil, and unlimited salt. Everything that the God of heaven has required should be precisely done for the temple of the God of heaven. Why should there be wrath against the empire of the king and his sons? Furthermore, be aware of the fact that you have no authority to impose tax, tribute, or toll on any of the priests, the Levites, the musicians, the doorkeepers, the temple servants, or the attendants at the temple of this God. Now you, Ezra, in keeping with the wisdom of your God, which you possess, appoint judges and court officials who can arbitrate cases on behalf of all the people who are in trans-Euphrates who know the laws of your God. Those who do not know this law should be taught. 
everyone who does not observe both the law of your God and the law of the king will be completely liable to the appropriate penalty, whether it is death or banishment or confiscation of property or detainment in prison. Blessed be the Lord God of our fathers who so moved in the heart of the king to so honor the temple of the Lord which is in Jerusalem. He has also conferred his favor on me before the king, his advisors, and all the influential leaders of the king. I gained strength as the hand of the Lord my God was on me, and I gathered leaders from Israel to go up with me. These are the leaders and those enrolled with them by genealogy who were coming up with me from Babylon during the reign of King Artaxerxes. From the descendants of Phineas, Gershom, from the descendants of Ithamar, Daniel, from the descendants of David, Hattush, the sons of Shechaniah, from the descendants of Parosh, Zechariah, and with him were enrolled by genealogy a hundred and fifty men. From the descendants of Pehath Moab, Elihoenai, son of Zeraiah, and with him two hundred men. From the descendants of Zatu, Shechaniah, son of Jehaziel, and with him three hundred men. From the descendants of Aden, Ebed, son of Jonathan, and with him fifty men. From the descendants of Elam, Jeshea, son of Athaliah, and with him seventy men. From the descendants of Shephatiah, Zebediah, son of Michael, and with him eighty men. From the descendants of Joab, Obadiah, son of Jehiel, and with him two hundred and eighteen men. From the descendants of Bani, Shalomoth, son of Josephiah, and with him a hundred and sixty men. From the descendants of Bebai, Zechariah, son of Bebai, and with him twenty-eight men. From the descendants of Asgad, Johanan, son of Hakatan, and with him a hundred and ten men. From the descendants of Adonikam, there were the latter ones. Their names were Eliphalet, Jeuel, and Shemaiah, and with them sixty men. From the descendants of Bigvi, Uthai, and Zachar, and with them seventy men. I had them assemble at the canal that flows towards Ahava, and we camped there for three days. I observed that the people and the priest were present, but I found no Levites there. So I sent for Eliezer, Ariel, Shemaiah, Elnathan, Jerob, Elnathan, Nathan, Zechariah, and Meshulam, who were leaders, and Joarib and Elnathan, who were teachers. I sent them to Iddo, who was the leader in the place called Casiphia. I told them what to say to Iddo and his relatives, who were the temple servants in Casiphia so they would bring us attendance for the temple of our God. Due to the fact that the good hand of our God was on us, they brought us a skilled man from the descendants of Malai, the son of Levi, son of Israel. This man was Sherebiah, who was accompanied by his sons and brothers, eighteen men, and Hashabiah, along with Jesheah, from the descendants of Mirai, with his brothers and their sons, twenty men, and some of the temple servants that David and his officials had established for the work of the Levites, 220 of them. They were all designated by name. I called for a fast there by the Ahava Canal, so that we might humble ourselves before our God and seek from him a safe journey for us, our children, and all our property. I was embarrassed to request soldiers and horsemen from the king to protect us from the enemy along the way, because we had said to the king, The good hand of our God is on everyone who is seeking him, but his great anger is against everyone who forsakes him. So we fasted and prayed to our God about this, and he answered us. Then I set apart twelve of the leading priests, together with Sherebiah, Hashabiah, and ten of their brothers, and I weighed out to them the silver, the gold, and the vessels intended for the temple of our God, items that the king, his advisors, his officials, and all Israel who were present had contributed. I weighed out to them 650 talents of silver, silver vessels worth 100 talents, 100 talents of gold, 
twenty gold bowls worth one thousand derricks, and two exquisite vessels of gleaming bronze as valuable as gold. Then I said to them, You are holy to the Lord, just as these vessels are holy. The silver and the gold are a voluntary offering to the Lord, the God of your fathers. Be careful with them and protect them until you weigh them out before the leading priests and the Levites and the family leaders of Israel in Jerusalem in the storerooms of the temple of the Lord. Then the priests and the Levites took charge of the silver, the gold, and the vessels that had been weighed out to transport them to Jerusalem to the temple of our God. On the twelfth day of the first month, we began traveling from the Hava Canal to go to Jerusalem. The hand of our God was on us, and he delivered us from our enemy and from bandits along the way. So we came to Jerusalem, and we stayed there for three days. On the fourth day, we weighed out the silver, the gold, and the vessels in the house of our God into the care of Miramoth, son of Uriah the priest, and Eliezer, son of Phinehas, who were accompanied by Josabad, son of Jeshua, and Noadiah, son of Binui, who were Levites. Everything was verified by number and by weight, and the total weight was written down at that time. The exiles who were returning from the captivity offered burnt offerings to the God of Israel, twelve bulls for all Israel, ninety-six rams, seventy-seven male lambs, along with twelve male goats as a sin offering. All this was a burnt offering to the Lord. Then they presented the decree of the king to the king's satraps, and to the governors of Trans-Euphrates, who gave help to the people and to the temple of God. God, I, I remember the trips or vacations that my family went on, a family of six. And I'm not sure how we ended up still being a family at the end of any of those vacations. From the typical dad yelling that he's going to pull over if we don't stop what we're doing to mom telling one of you sit on that corner and the other sit in that corner and don't cross this line and to us saying he touched me he touched me <laughs> oh vacations were a nightmare I'm not sure why they were called vacations but in traveling together with just six of us in a short amount of time usually a weekend or maybe five days and fighting with each other and being grouchy and grumpy and all of that. I can't imagine a gigantic group of people coming from Babylon <laughs> to Jerusalem over a span of four months weren't also the same. Uh, it couldn't have been very fun because obviously this encompassed not just the warriors but children and um, elderly people and everybody in between including handicapped and sick. Uh, we're making their way back to Jerusalem. Um, in this process, Ezra, you have put it on Ezra's heart, to teach him about the laws that Moses had originally given them. If they were going to come back to the promised land and, and rebuild the temple. They needed to know what those original rules, uh, the original law, was for them. So here's Ezra on a mission that you've put on his heart to learn and then teach about the law and you have all these people who are traveling back to Jerusalem they're leaving their home many of them for quite a few decades leaving their home um, just an interesting situation that Ezra's in and I think we can learn a lot to his dedication of teaching others about your word now there's a very small remnant that came out of this uh, they said 220 um, that came out of this that that Ezra was able to call together uh, for you God um, but I still think about his dedication in those four months it's not like a church plant which is hard enough unto itself and it's not like a regular church that they taught in for four months this was day in day out people traveling hard travel uh, 900 miles to get back to this place that some of them had never even seen in their lifetime and Ezra's dedication throughout that time to teach about the law of the Lord the law of you um, 
speaks volumes to when our heart has been called to do something that our obedience should be there and you will provide the strength you'll provide the way you'll provide the means for doing it Ezra's not usually a story that you hear sermons about having to do with obedience and dedication and perseverance but I think if you put it in the context of anybody who's ever been on a family vacation and then imagine doing that for four months and then imagine on top of it trying to teach the people in your family something very important and by the end of it the fact that Ezra had over 200 people committed to following the law I think that's pretty phenomenal with what he had God I know that you orchestrated all of this I know that you gave Ezra the strength and determination and perseverance and and I just ask the same for for this ministry as well as everyone else listening that You call us to do something. You put something on Ezra's heart, something very brave. And then you give us a way to do it. So he dedicated himself to the study of the law of the Lord. We don't know exactly how he went about doing that, but he learned your laws. And then that perseverance of going and teaching your people about those laws. God, we just pray for that in our own ministries, in our own mission fields. That we're obedient first and foremost that we're not obedient after we have seen the plan that we're not obedient after we know everything that we think we need to know from the bible that we're not obedient after every t's been crossed and i dotted and our comfort level is fine you call we need to be obedient and then fully trust in you that everything else will fall into place god i'm just praying today that everyone listening to this video right now will will follow through with the trust part that you will always take care of us that if you that if you call us to something you will put in place the people the situations the events the software the travel plans whatever it is that you need to have happen for what you've called us to do that you will take care of those things god we just humbly come to you knowing full well that we want to be in control at all times That it is very difficult to give up all aspects of our life to you and over to you. But in order for your will to happen in our lives and the lives of those around us, that's exactly what we need to do. Please give us the strength and the power and the desire today to do what pleases you. In your son's name I pray. Amen.